So if I can show you guys one of the reasons, well, not one of the reasons, there's several reasons why I still use Studio One to make beats. I use Studio One to mix and master sound design, creating sample packs and whatever, right? I think it's great for all of that, right? But I still use Studio One for music production, especially like TV production, post-production, anything, you know, anything like that. But for for simple beats like this, I'm creating an R&B beat. If I could show you quickly, one of the things I really, really love about Studio One is the ability to use arranger blocks, which I think is one of the most efficient ways to keep tabs on, you know, keep everything organized and it's easy to to maneuver, duplicate and take one section, squeeze it in between another section. Like, I don't want to mess my, my track up, but basically, like, if I do something like this, first of all, all I have to do is click and just duplicate. You know what I mean? Duplicate as many times as I want, right? Or if I wanted to take this section to go between this section, it's done, right? I'm going to undo that, obviously. And it's just... I don't have to highlight all of the tracks just to do that. It's just click on this section and it automatically respects everything that follows. Like that's why this is, is this is here. Now, if you prefer to work from markers, that is still a thing. It's still available. If I wanted to say, I don't know, to make this say verse one, whatever. You know, and then make this section say you know, just double click on it and say hook. I think that's the hook. I don't know. Right? I can still work from markers. The cool thing about this is that if I am doing things like sound design, for instance, I use markers a lot for this purpose but if I need to bounce in place I'm sorry like bounce out several cues especially also, well also with TV if I'm dealing with that like this is phenomenal because I'll have different sections that I want to bounce you know this section that section you know what I mean like stuff like that and like I say for sound design if I have several things lined up and you know laid out in a linear form I can go this route. So there's this option that says between each marker and it will spit out everything. Boom, 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 boom. You know, all at the same time, one button hit. Okay. And you're done. And then you just watch out for the settings. Um, obviously I'm not going for these, but I was just, I was just trying to show y'all, but yeah, these different settings, I can, I can spit them out at the same time. Wave. I remember there was a time we couldn't do this, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what that is. And then a lot of times what I'll do is import the track back. Sometimes like if I am satisfied with what I'm doing, like a base, a, you know, a, a solid sample that I created, like, like that's just bare minimum. And I want to do several things on top of that. I'll just import the track back into the song, you know, and this that's the button for that. Anyway, let's move on. So when I'm in MIDI mode or piano roll, I'm going to get rid of this browser real quick. This is what we're looking at, right? Or we was. Okay. So, yeah, well, it looks normal, right? You know, this is what we're used to but with the ability to open up other options i can now see those same you know the same setup as in the ranger which is up here i can see it in the piano roll so it it just basically tightens down a more streamlined workflow you know if you're really, really focused on things down here. And and it's also helpful when you are someone using several screens, you know. Some of you guys have several screens connected to your system. Well, 
if this is the case, well, here is a pop out of that and say that this was a separate screen. Well, I still can keep tabs on what I label my marker, my range window, or, you know, like I say, markers or whatnot, I have access to that. I can also open up other lanes like the chords if I'm using chords or time signature if I'm using that. You know what I mean? Like, that's, you know, some of the reasons why I like working in Studio One for for for, for, for that. You know, some of those, those small details. People people fly fly by that stuff. But um so back to the markers say that I didn't have these different sections. Let's delete that. Let's see. Delete range. No, I just want to delete the markers. So if I delete those and say we say we the type of person that like to you know work for markers well no problem we can also create the range window from that bam there you go see um that's that's what it's about and then of course you can double click on each section and it'll play more like clips how Ableton Live works that way the song will continue to play so this is kind of cool you know or you can do it from here wait you gotta click on the guitar pick deal that's what it looks like you know what I mean it's a nice little way to keep things going I guess All right, so I do these type of videos. I stream live when I make beats live. So I guess I'll I'll continue to work on the beat and just show you guys my workflow. Me, in particular, I like to use a bunch of native instrument products. So as we can see, I am using complete control i use complete control a lot i use contact x actually contact was probably like the most used by me because i can load up up to 16 tracks especially when i'm doing orchestral type music i will just have one instance of contact and i can route them to separate tracks in terms of like throwing separate processing per track and you know, in just a routing situation, you know, with contact, right? Like that's why I like using it. And I could throw a compressor on track one, throw an EQ on track three, put a halftime on track fifteen. You know what I mean? I can do that without having several instances. Now this one is complete control. Now this one is only one instrument. So Native Instruments has two different instrument players if you will if that makes any sense this one is more so geared towards that one instance you know what i mean which is kind of cool so i use this quite quite often as well where i, I you know want to have several and it makes it makes things easier you know of course but uh this is vocal colors this is an an instrument that has not been out that long but i found something in here that inspired me to create a r&b style beat here and I made some some additions and changes and whatnot. So I really like working from Native Instruments stuff like that. You know, their their instruments are just crazy. You you can never go wrong with creativity. It's all here. It just it just makes sense. So yeah, that's what I got going on here. Right, I got that one. And then Super Eight. Come to think of, I do want to make a make a little change. Yeah, something like that.
I'm gonna come in here and adjust my volume here. I don't need it to be variations. That's what I want. Yeah, right there. That's my method when I want to get everything at the same level. I just bring the volume all the way up or all the way down. I think they both work the same, but I usually just increase, I highlight everything, increase it, bring it up to the ceiling, and then bring it right back down because in these type of instruments, they have different articulations as you increase the volume. It sounds different. Like this one has a slap. Is the attack is stronger as I bring it all the way up. When I bring it down, it's more of a subtle round sound. You know what I mean? I like that a whole lot better. And then these other lanes are just for your other automation situations. Also, if you are dealing with uh, key... I can, can never remember the name, but it's it's basically sound variations in here. That's the new name for it. It's key something. I, I'll remember it as we go through the video. Key switches. <laughs> that's what that's what it was. In other programs or other instruments, it's still called key switches, but it's it's the same thing. Sound variations inside of Studio One. I guess they changed the name because they want to go further and do other things. So with sound variations, you can, yeah, this is very advanced. You could do all types of stuff in here. Um, there are instruments that is compatible with this, like U-Jam, is, is, which is one of them. U-Jam is, I don't know, they have a tight relationship with them where most of those instruments are created and it already have those articulations in here prepared for you already. And with that being said, there is, you know, in the piano roll, there's lanes that are just dedicated to those key switches or sound variations in, in this case. But, uh, yeah, we just, we, we're not going to touch this, but that's, that's just one of those things. This is my pitch being, I'm always in this area sometimes. Well, I'm in there often. How about that? You know, if I can rephrase that, I know somebody going to be like, wait, are you in there or not? Make up your mind. The other thing about Studio One is that I love how it is the MIDI, like the editing, you know, editing MIDI in here is just super advanced. You know, I love working out of Ableton Live. You know, every once in a while, you guys will see me work out of there on my live streams but when it comes to editing i feel like studio one is where it is it's where is that when when you know we're dealing with that because here's something else that will happen and I, i'm gonna just create some random random notes or whatever so if we focus on like something like this right let's just just say hypothetically this is what we're working on you know as i record things in you know human all of the notes are not going to be the same length right and obviously that's not going to be the same volume with hint hence the reason why i went in and changed the volume to the same thing because of this style of music but if i need all of the notes to be the same length well all i have to do is highlight them all and then I can do, I can come at the edge of this here and hit, wait a second, I'm, I'm adjusting something else up here. I don't want to do that. Okay, let me see. Okay, all right. All right, so if, if, if I want everything to be the same exact length, then... I am going to go to the edge of this and hit shift and command. And I think if you're on a PC, it's going to be shift and alt. I believe that's how that goes. I'm working for from a Mac, by the way, guys, if you haven't noticed. But 
Studio One is on both platforms, so it's like you guys can get the gist of what's going on, regardless of what platform you're working from. So this is what I what I do when I want all of the, the, the notes to be the same. So hit those two together. Also, you can you can um, warp. You can warp the, the notes. I had to do that earlier, as a matter of fact. But if I can come, I can come at the edge of this and and I'm warping. It's, it's like warping audio, but you're warping the MIDI, which is kind of cool. So I will do that sometimes as well, depending on what I, you know, it depends on what I'm doing. If, if yeah, it just depends. But um, the other thing is, and Ableton Live does this, if I need to make these notes legato, legato, legato meaning long or sustained notes touching the edge of the start of the next note, right? I don't know if that makes sense, but but yeah, that's that's what that is. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to my macros. My macros right here. Oh, by the way, there's, yeah, these things change depending on what you're trying to do. So here's my macros. And you can customize your page. These are, these are different editing pages if you will, right? Like right down here, this whole strip is dedicated to the piano roll. Like you can go in and, and, and switch. They give you some default ones, but you can go in and create your own pages and make edits. I've done that before, but when I updated something, it knocked out all of the stuff that I say before. So I had to recreate that, but it's pretty cool that it does that. And it's the same for the top as well. The top is also, you know, you can come up here and do whatever, you know, I like to be in the music editing. I like that. It's pretty cool. Okay, so legato and overlap, right? Boom. So it touch the the tip of the next note, right? I probably use that feature like religiously. That's pretty cool. Also, another thing is like when you overlapping notes. Sometimes when you're programming, you know, when you start and you may mentally not realize that the loop started over again and you start and you, it's like, you still, you still in that groove. Cause this is man, this is you feeling it. And like, you don't know to stop at that, you know? So sometimes you are, or, or if you start at different points, you know, you may start in the middle of your selected loop range and you just go at it regardless. Right. There are times where you overlap notes the only way that this works, what I'm about to show you, is if you quantize everything, if everything is quantizing and you have, and you have double notes, this is where you go and say, delete double notes. This is a feature that saves me a lot of time, bro. I mean, this is crazy. Now, if I'm doing other styles of music, like what I've been doing, like lo-fi, where I'm not really quantizing, then, it, then you know, I have to go back and, like, you know... Like something like this, I have to go back and select the note and then delete it manually. You know, you know that that is a pain, but it is what it is. But that's there, that's available. That's something I use. Um, like I say, it only works if you quantize everything because what it does is smart enough to know that hey, you got overlapping notes on the same the same start time, and so there you go. Um, also, if you want to humanize everything, you know. There's an option to do that. And you just, boom, you know, hit it a couple of times and then it just kind of like moves stuff. And I think it, it's messing with the um, the volume as well, I think. Yep. It's doing a bit of start, stop, starting, and the, the end point of that. And it's, I think it's adjusting the, oh, no, never mind. Well, yeah. You hit it several times, it just kind of gives you different. Uh, but I don't know by how much. I think you can actually set the humanization value. There is a window that may pop up. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But, yeah, I don't really use that option often, but it's it's cool, you know. Because quantizing all the time is not ideal all the time, you know. 
certainly something I don't use. But uh, yeah, that's that's an option there. You got your quick quantize notes here. You can quickly quantize things if you know. They, these are macro buttons. You know what I mean? Like in Studio One, you can ma- you can make anything a macro button, which is crazy. That is the other reason why I like Studio One because the customization is crazy. So if you want to customize your shortcuts, here is where you would do that. You just take find a command that you want, make a shortcut for it. It is also the reason why I cannot give a thorough answer. Sometimes people ask me, what's the key command for that? Um, I don't know. It depends. I can do my best and tell you what command I did, like what the result was, because I could customize stuff in here. And yeah. Anyway, another one is sometimes when I have um, maybe I'm rocking with a groove or something like that. And I'm, you know, not sure of like how I want the rhythm, you know, if I want to chop the bass up or I want it to be legato. Um, Say like this note is supposed to be one long note, right? It's just super easy to come in here and just make it all one. That is a feature, bro. That that's a real thing for me, at least. I love that. In other dolls, I ain't going to name no dolls. I'm not going to do that. But you got to do stuff like this. Well, I don't need to take that out. And then you then you extend that note, right? That That's time consuming, bro. That's time consuming. Like, why not just, you know, like this will be the case, right? Sometimes I've, I've been here several times, guys. You know, if I want this to be one note, okay, sweet. Take that, boom. The feature for this is glue, I believe. Gluing together. Quickly, I need to see what that feature was. Okay, yeah, that was, no, it was merge. My bad. It's the same thing. Every doll has different terms to describe something. That was glue or join. I think logic is join. Join, join, um, MIDI notes together. It is called glue and able to line up, I believe. And in here, it's called merge. See that? It's like three different words to describe the same exact thing. Ain't that something? Anyway, um, now this is another feature that Studio One they have introduced. As I, I remember, I don't know if it was four or five. I think it was five. Where if you make your notes big enough in terms of like, you know, maximizing them like this, I think depending on where you are, yeah, depending on where you are, it turns into a smart, a smart function. Uh, like if you're at the tip or the top or the bottom, the bottom, the top, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I don't remember, but I think, yeah, I think you can do that, which makes, gosh, I, yeah, there we go. Well, I guess you got to be in the note, like not on the edge because the edge represents you getting ready to shorten or lengthening the MIDI note. But if you like somewhere like this, it turns into a a blade tool, and then if you go at the top portion of it, it turns into the volume deal. So you take that and you just adjust it. So instead of coming down here, you can do it from here. Also, like now you can't do that obviously if the the notes are smaller like this. But before this feature came out, all I was doing was hitting the the command, I believe it. No. Yeah. The command and option for me. And I think for you guys, it would be, it would be alt and option. I think on the PC, if you're working from a PC, that's what it would be. But here I have always done it like this. I could take several of these notes and it's just real quick for me. It's just go boom. 
increase the, the volume. That's usually how I do it. You know, sometimes I come here. Also, if you want to be like super, let me delete this here. It seems like I'm spending a lot of time in this section. So I'm going to go to another instrument and just create something here. So it seems that Okay. I have no idea what I'm doing, but those are notes. And let's see. One of the other things that you could do, like if you wanted to be like precise, whatever, those are probably like horrible notes. But it's a thing in Studio One, obviously, right? Because you can you can come up here and change your tool. I believe it's the pen tool, and you can wait a second. Let's click off of anything and then go back in here, right? Like you can actually write it in or pencil it in if you're trying to be precise like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's probably pretty cool for like hi hats or something like that. If that's what you're trying to do. Also, if you don't want to freehand it, and I think that's what that is. That's a freehand situation. There are other options here. So if I want to square this, I wonder why it comes up like that. Oh, there's a glitch. Oh, that is a square. <laughs> like, um, bro, that is a square. Okay. Oh, the square, the resolution. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's weird. Okay. I think, okay, the reason why that is is because my quantization is quick so let's take it to one four let's see what happens now let's see there we go anyway i'm gonna come early and then i'm gonna hit in my case it'll be option when you hit option you get the you get to drag these you know what i mean you drag it it's like warping but if you don't if you don't do it at first it's just going to create this is going to keep going. Boom, 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 boom. And it's according to the resolution that's set. So in this case, I I went to one fourths. Um, again, let's go back to square. And I think that was the problem at first. Like I was wondering like what that was. Okay. So here we go. I've used this option when I was dealing with panning. And, and you, you know, you, cause you can go into the automation lane as well and do exactly this. This is really cool. I like this. And I can obviously transform these, say that I want the bottom to be right there. And I want this like that. I could take that. I can also do something like that. It's just kind of transform things. This is another way to do things. I can also you know, do some weird stuff. Now, this will really make sense if I'm in automation. If I'm automating things, oh, man, this will be crazy. So every once in a while, I'll, I will do that. You know, it's kind of cool. Let's get everything, like, perfect, you know, and perfection. Perfections. All right, so that's just some of the things that I, I really, really like about Studio One because of its ability to do several things like that. Um, one of my favorite features is when dealing with entering new instruments, the ability to drag and drop is, is crazy. Like, I love that feature. 
dragging and dropping is like, dude. And I think most dolls does it now. Like, Able 10, you can do that. Big Wig, you can do that. Logic, not so. Logic has not jumped on that bandwagon yet. You still have to go through the, like, you have to go through the dang on thing. And, you know what I'm saying? Then you got to search for. Now, in this case, at least there is a, a search, like a you can type in what you want. At least Studio One has that. Like, if you want to go that route when you, like, go to a channel and type in, and every so often I would do this, but at least you could type it in. I don't think you could do that in Logic yet, still. Like, you have to rememberize the manufacturer. And I say this all the time, like, rememberizing the manufacturer is, like, one of those things you just never really remember. It's like, why are we required to do that? It's, it's a requirement. Now, if you're a beat maker like me, when you got like so many instruments and so many effects, a lot of times you you have like brain freezes when you, when it comes to like pulling up instruments, which is why I I do like the fact that Studio One allows you to have thumbnails in here so that I can see because thumbnails helps me create the beat faster or the mix faster when I can just see the thumbnails and obviously you got to go one by one like when you bring in the track you you have to save the thumbnail that is a an unfortunate but it's cool that like Studio One allows you to do that versus like Ableton you you don't have thumbnails in there um Bitwig no but those browsers are kind of set up in a way where it makes things easy to find so it's not too bad but this is pretty cool having thumbnails logic no you have to remember the manufacturer I don't remember the manufacturer I just know the plugin I want to use you know what I'm saying so yeah that's how that goes here's your effects section here's your loops here is um, your file section uh, for those of you that don't know, you can also pull in tracks from other songs you did previously and pull in presets from those tracks. I recently was asked this question and like all you have to do is find a song on your hard drive through the file system here and you can actually go in to your tracks. Like say for instance, you know, one of the beats I made was this one here i can go in my track and just pull in any of these instruments and just drag it in boom i have that same exact instrument and i believe it's the same exact preset as i customize it to fit that particular song well say i want to use that again well there we go i can pull it in from the other song with no problem also here's the performances so if you want to grab the midi information from there you know you could do that and i believe you can play the MIDI and it at least show you, give you a, a demo of what it sound like. You know what I'm saying? So you can pull it in like that. And then also the presets. So if I have a certain chain that I love when I put it on this piano or something like that, I want to add that same thing onto this track. Well, here you go. Here's the presets, the chains. Say I want to go after this one or I don't know. I'm trying to look for something that has several. I, I think I kept this track pretty simple. But yeah, anyway, this is the, the plug-in and the way that you set it. Whatever, the you know, you just drag that in and, and it'll put it on that track for you, which is, which is really cool. So yeah, I wanted to just show that real quick. Yeah. So yeah, you can you can pull in data from other areas. Absolutely. Um the other uh, the other cool thing well, it's not really a cool thing cuz all dolls does is but you can create presets in a in a instrument like the instrument itself will allow you to create presets. I think most instruments does that, but you can also save a preset within Studio 1, which is cool. 
And when you do that, the presets comes in. And this is like right up under here. And this is why some of these has, like for instance, massive. This is the old one, by the way. Underneath it, it will have like the presets. Some of the presets you save, like this, for instance. This is a preset. And then you could just actually just go for that preset and, you know, throw it right here in the session. I'm looking for another one that I did that for. Um, here's another one. Yeah. So I'm I'm always working the superior drum and of course I said I say presets. So here's my presets for that. And I just throw that in there and then it goes straight to that preset. Now, I've complained about this browser a lot. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but I feel like it could be a cleaner way to do this because anyway, I digress. So yeah, there we go. Enough about the browser. Um, about yeah, well, the browser does a lot of cool things. Actually, you can collaborate with people. It has the cloud function in here, where you can collaborate. If you are a Sphere member, this is how you gain access to that. Update your tracks, and I have a couple right here. I have not worked from this drive in a while so these files are a little older but yeah it's there you can do that like it's all within studio one i don't have to come out of studio one to go anywhere else it's there which is kind of cool i do like that here is the shop um i don't know what it's gonna do i don't know if it's gonna sign me in i have not did this in a while so hopefully studio one does not shut down on me um, I guess we can visit that area later, or maybe it's not doing anything anyway. But yeah, you can also upload straight to SoundCloud if that's what you choose to do. I just don't usually do that. Something happened, I don't, I wonder. Nope, it didn't. All right, back to the track. Back to the track. So, let's see. Let's unsolo that. We can clear the solo by this thing down here. That is something I love too. Like if I'm in Bitwig, that Bitwig just don't work like that. I think the only way to clear everything, you have to be in the the mixer window to clear everything. In the studio one, it doesn't matter where you are. I don't think. It just don't matter. They're like who cares? Yeah, see? This line right here, the the clearing your solo or your mutes, it just lives here. That, you know, it's just there. Maybe it's not there when you push out this mixer. Yeah, there is no solo button here when you push out the mixer. Well, it's on the master. <laughs> it's on the master, so there you go. So this is, you could throw this to another window. And then you got all the, you know, you can, you have several ways to look at the mixer here. in right here go for okay instead of going to impact let's do this let's look for I'm looking for a snap so I'm gonna type in snap and I 
I kind of want something tighter and I add my own reverb to it. I like that. There is some type of reverb, but it's, it's short, so that's cool. Okay, so if we're going to go for the show in context. Wait, wait a second. This must be a different file. I'm trying to show y'all something. What's up with that? What's up with that? Anyway. Show in context. That's weird. Really? Is that? Anyway, I don't know what just happened, but what I was trying to show you is here. So I'm just going to create a, a new impact and it just went there. Right. It just created it for me. Or if I wanted to go to sample one, it'll create that instead. Right. That's cool. Right. So on this track, I'm going to activate the patterns and you activate that by hitting. Okay. I hit option. So if I hit option, it might be alt. No, it might still be option. I think option is the same on PC and Mac. It's the command button for me. That's on the Mac. Our button is called command or at one point it was called Apple. In the PC world, that is your alt. That's your alt button. So I'm I'm trying to not lose anybody. Okay. So my pattern I want to put right here because that's the yeah, we're gonna go right here. Actually I'm gonna bring this up a little further because I want to be yeah something like that all right okay so let's get this one and just start from here so i want to add some claps there or snaps Let's add some snaps there. So here's the pattern deal. So so that's one, one, two, three, four. That's one bar long. So you you have to understand step sequencing in order to get this to work properly. In my case, like if I want this to be two bars, I'll have to increase this to say thirty two instead of sixteen, but real quick i'm just going to add these claps and what well, he snaps right so that's a way quick way to and i could leave it right there if i want to but that's not realistic for me um what i like to do double this here two three four no i don't want to double that double the resolution double yeah that's what i want to do so doubling the the resolution see double resolution and double lane resolution are two different things sometimes you can go here and say you can type in like for instance i'm gonna say 16 and then go back to the 16 right but in this case, we're just going to leave like one, two, three, four. So I think two bars is good enough for me. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, two. Ah. Actually, I take that back. That's still one bar. What am I talking about? Yeah, 
So <laughs> I encourage you guys just to play with this. Let's see if I let's see if I double lane res one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Let's go one twenty eight. Right, okay. So that's two bars right there. So I gotta hit here again to get that. Okay, that's too early. Gosh. Still too early, gosh. I think that's. that's. There we go. Now, I would do it this way if I need to add other things like later on that's that's gonna spill out over time. You know what I'm saying? I think I might be okay with just going back to what was it 32? 64. I might be okay with that. Cause I, I'm well, I don't know. It depends on. But the cool thing about this is, if I was to build up on another area, I can go back to to that, and I can also do that for different lanes. Like I can make my lane. If I add a kick right now, yeah, let's do that. See how I add this here, and actually, it's good that this one is 64 one, yeah, 64 by 164. The next line is my snaps, which is simple, but my kick lane the resolution is a little bit larger, so I can go right. So, so my class right there, and I could probably split the this here and say I'll say intro see the, the workflow here is just amazing and this is why I like working in studio one in terms of workflow now in terms of creativity that's a whole nother topic creativity is different and yeah we're not going to go into that Y'all got to be subscribed to the channel on the live stream to figure that out. Um, I don't know what we call this. Call it intro too. Also, if you don't like the colors, you can customize these joints. So check that out. This was a thing. I got bored with the colors, and so I'm glad that they updated that. All right, so. So I changed it from stereo to mono, and it's easy to spit these out 
which is what it does automatically here actually let's get these i want this one to be mono one this one can be mono two right and it's just as, as simple as that you know you change it down here and then you go here at the top and you just open them up or make sure they open but anytime you make changes it automatically opens and so what happens is back here it's it's on lane here so this is my my snaps and this will be my kick like it's simple there's nothing complicated about that but it, it can get complicated if you don't know like what's really going on this this actual track I'll just say the drums right that's my spelling don't steal okay so even though this track right here is designated it's the actual impact track it no longer controls whatever these are doing so for instance you know what I mean like it's just not gonna do that cause everything is routed out separately now alright All right. so let's, let's go to the next the next joint and we're gonna copy this to that section and I'm gonna bring them snaps down I wonder if I leave it in here and see what it's on okay I don't want the claps there complicated like this now the only way to get like past that you know you know what i mean like i'm i want the kick to be more a little bit uh, uh, more a little bit what am i saying i want the kick to be more complicated than just that because this right here is just repeating every 32 you know what i mean but what i want to do here is is complicate the kick so so the, the I can still I can remain in, in pattern mode and just record here and this with this record button, this little circle here, this is what turns yeah, this is cool. So let's hit play. That's probably too much. Sounds like it's too late. Bring that back. Oh, that's way too late. Let's do it like that. Simple. I thought I was gonna be complicated. Okay. Now what I forgot to do was this. If I'm gonna do that. This is what I forgot to do. Man. I always forget to do this. I'm going to hit this I button and it's going to allow me to duplicate that. Right? I'm going to come back to the first variation and I'm going to take the kick off because 
Um, not, that's not what I want for the first variation. So the first variation, I'm just going to call this snap or verse. And then this one can be hook, right? So this is the, this is the second variation. And it also shows you in the actual event in the range window here, right? So this is the hook and these are the snaps. That's what I label it, right? Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Oh, okay. When I deleted that snap, it w I was in the same variation. That's why. Okay, let's do, let's let's come back. <laughs> there we go. Right. And because both of these events are the same, it's just gonna continue. Right. So if any of you guys use a machine, this is kind of the same workflow. Dealing with patterns, you know that if you don't if you don't unique them, that's a term. There is a unique button. If you don't make them unique for the different sections, you are typically working from the same pattern each time. So if you delete something here, you add something there, blah, blah, blah. Just know that you're doing it to all of the patterns that you have that pattern live on that section, if that makes any sense. So in this situation, snaps, I label it snaps. This is the first variation on both of these. All I did was duplicate them. But when we come back to this area, that's when I differentiate them. So now I call this one hook and I, and I can switch between them anytime. You know what I mean? I can go back to snaps if I want to, if I want the snaps to be right there, but I add this. And if I want to add snaps in here alone with it, I can, but this is going to, you know what I mean? It's, it's a different variation. If that makes sense. So sometimes I work like this, you know, sometimes I just go the old school way and just that's solid. The cool thing about this also is that if, you know, you want to work from patterns, you know, you're not limited there. No problem. You can always convert this over to part, right? I can convert this over and now I'm back in the original or old school, if you will, the, the normal way, you know, I can come in here and do other things, continue recording. I can make it as complicated as, as I want to. know I can you know let me see maybe like that I didn't record that but because we have um retrospective we just go ahead and just add that in there I did a quick variation to this and it's like wait that's kind of cool so let, let me clean it up I don't want those there. That's what it was. Yeah, I definitely want to clean that one note of do, do, do. All right. So there is a couple of viewpoints here with the triangle deals. I don't really care too much for this, but it is what it is. That's what they have. I kind of like dealing with things like this because I guess because it's I'm used to it. Maybe. So I'm going to quantize that right there.
So maybe I can say boom like right there at the end. Um change my resolution and then be like like um the boo let's see what that sounds like oh it didn't do anything oh because i'm on it no i don't want it to do that uh let's change resolution again but this time we're going to split the grid Take out the first one. Uh, this one. Yeah, that's cool. And now we're going to go to the pitch. No, not the pitch, but the volume deal and increase this here. And this is where we can grab this line and go like that. Actually, wait a second. Wait a second. There is something. Oh, it looks like there's something else there. Oh, yeah, it is. Let's take that out. I don't know what that is. Anyway. Let's just say delete double notes. And bring that one back. I don't know what happened there. But anyway, I'm going to highlight this section. Actually, I don't have to highlight that section. Go back to my line and go like lines. Yeah, something like that. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's solid. I like that. Okay. So stuff like that. Like editing things in here is super cool. Let's come out of this one here. And then we're going to go back to patterns because I think it's cool to work from patterns. So in this case, we're going to convert this back to the pattern. And okay, never mind. It just totally make things whack. But you get the gist. I mean, it, it it kept the simple. Wait a second. Where are my variations? It's like it's totally different. Okay. Is is that's kind of weird. I don't know what happened. If I go back here, well, never mind. Let's keep it like that. You know what I mean? Like, eh, whatever. I think if I was doing something simple, this is way too long for patterns to pick up. I think that's why it's not doing that. But if, if this was more like a, a four bar, you know what I mean? Like something simple, it, you know, I am working from 119. My, my, my tempo is 119 and I am working from an eight bar loop right now. So that's probably why it's not doing that. But if I was, yeah, something simple, but it's all the same difference. It don't matter whatever yeah I'll keep it there that's fine and there's different volume here yeah. I'm not concerned Whatever. I ain't gonna worry about it. All right. So in other instances, I would add vocal, like downloading them from Splice or something like that, Loop Masters, or I might have something already already on my system, or I may just record it in my mic 
and get it going inside of here. Like if I hear something, you know what I mean? There's several ways to do that. You need to add ear candy in here to make it fire. I guess I would do a part two to this video to show y'all like the progression of this track, maybe. Okay. Well, that is all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Subscribe to the channel for more of these. I do live videos where I interact with you guys. So it's always cool to see you and hang out with you, get to know you. I'm also on Discord. All of the affiliate links are in the description of this video, as a matter of fact. So whatever you need. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions on this video. I I try to respond to everybody. I'm not one of those YouTubers that come back like two years later. Um, although sometimes I do do that because I don't know that, <laughs> that people become. But I will respond the best, best way I can. Reach out to me. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm everywhere. So I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions. If y'all interested in that, you're stuck. Like, how do I break out the the beat block or the how do I structure the song? Blah 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 blah. You know that type of stuff. Yeah, just hit me up. Remember, lifestyle is governed by art. Peace out. Be culture.